Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very, very special edition of the Money Mondays. Why is it special? Because of the freaking New Year's. Happy New Year's. If you're listening to this right now, it is January 1st, 2024. We started this podcast one year ago. Our anniversary is coming up in the next few weeks. I don't know the exact date. We'll figure it out shortly. And during that time, we have stayed number one in the entrepreneur category for 41 weeks in a row out of the 49, 50-ish weeks we've been live. So need your help. Keep that going. Liking, commenting, subscribing, visiting us at themoneymondays.com, sending it to your friends, etc. We talk about three core topics on this show. How to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity. So let's go through all those things. The real Tarzan is not here because he is currently teleporting to Dubai. Tomorrow, I'm going to teleport to Dubai to meet him out there. And so when you hear this, you'll probably be seeing content and social media from the two of us in Dubai, maybe filming some episodes out there with some special guests. Okay. What are the three core topics and why are they so important? Why did we even do this podcast? Why is it working so well? Why are we number three in the business category? Number one, the entrepreneur category. It's because we grew up thinking it's rude to talk about money. I firmly believe it's rude to not talk about money. And I think that's why a lot of our society has these situations and issues with credit card debt, loans, arguments with friends, situations that occur because we don't know how much to ask for salary. We don't know how to sign contracts with our friends. We don't know how to deal with situations when we need more money or more access to capital. We don't know if we should rent or lease. We don't know any of these things because we don't talk about in high school. We don't talk about in the household. So when the heck are we going to learn about it? Not in school, not in the house. Well, luckily, with the Money Mondays movement and what we're doing here, you guys have shown us that you care about talking about money. And your friends, family, followers, we want you to have those discussions with them as well. It's an important topic. So out of the three topics, how to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity, I do want to review the fact that we just got back from an 11-city toy drive in a 15-day period. Yes, it's psychotic. It's crazy. Why did we do it? It was the 10-year anniversary of our toy drive that we started for Trina's Kids Foundation. So for the 10 year anniversary, we decided to do a 10 city toy drive. The reason I said 11 cities is we had some extra money, extra toys after the toy drives the next day. So we decided to throw a pop-up toy drive in San Diego at the Everbowl Acai Bowl headquarters uh, three days later because we just had extra toys, extra money. So why not throw an 11th toy drive after throwing 10 toy drives? The goal of the toy drive and why was it so important to us? The goal of the toy drive was for people to replicate us. We want other people to do toy drives in their local towns, their cities, their states, their countries, all over the planet. And so I want them to see how we executed on the toy drive. How do we set up inside of gyms, airport hangars, parking lots, office buildings, etc. so that people could replicate their own toy drive in their town. Same reason we post about Thanksgiving food drives, back to school days, report card days, feeding the homeless, making backpacks for the homeless, etc., is I want people to replicate charity. They can kind of pick and choose what they see that I do or my friends do and see what they like for themselves, make it better, make it different, whatever. We also just did one of our largest tipping dinners. What is a tipping dinner? Well, this started a couple years ago during the shutdown with a guy named Jimmy Rex out of Salt Lake City, where he got us and a bunch of our friends together. We put up a hundred bucks each. We would surprise the waitress or the waiter with like 1200 bucks, 1600 bucks, sometimes two or $3,000 by getting 10, 15, 20, 30 friends together, pitching in a hundred bucks each. Sometimes we go crazy and get a thousand dollars each, completely unnecessary. You do not need to do that. You could do the same concept with 20 bucks, 50 bucks, hundred bucks, whatever's affordable to you. We just call it the $100 tipping club because it's an easy name. And that's kind of the spirit of it is focused on the hundred dollar tipping club. But again, pick whatever amount you want. But the idea is you get four friends, six friends, 12 friends, 30, 40 friends if you can to a local restaurant, not a fancy restaurant, not a fancy chain, to a local restaurant and you surprise the waiter or waitress or split it with the waitress and the kitchen staff and they can split up the money if you've got like, you know, 2K or 3K or 4K, maybe it's too much for one person. You could split it up and say, here's 50% to the waiter or waitress, here's 50% to the kitchen staff. And it's a great way for an excuse for you to get people together in your local town to meet up and do something good for some people, whether it's for one person, the waiter, waitress, or for multiple staff members. These tipping dinners have now happened thousands of times around the country, if not around the world. People are tagging us all the time. Plenty of people don't even know that we do it. That's what I want. I want it to get much bigger than me and much bigger than Jimmy Rex. I want it to get as big as possible. And so the tipping dinner is another fun thing you could do for charity. And if you notice... 
the ch charities that I get behind and why I push charity and promote it so much is I want to make it easy to do charity. And it's not about having a bunch of money when you do charity. It's more the energy, time, and getting people together that is what I care about on the charity side. Now, do charity needs, need money? Of course, right? If you're trying to cure cancer, cure AIDS, cure all these big things, these are things that take billions and billions of dollars and those going on for decades and decades. If you notice, the majority of the charities that I promote and post about is how do we save the animals? How do we give backpacks to the homeless? How do we give toys to children? How do we get food out on Thanksgiving? These are direct correlation type of charities where you can see, here's what we're going to do with the money. Here's what we're giving it to the person. You're going to see it very visually. I like very visual charities. But for you, as you're listening, you want to think about what type of charity matters to you. Did you have someone in your family that was impacted by Alzheimer's or breast cancer or homelessness, etc.? Maybe that's the type of thing you should get behind. Is there someone in your family with autism? Is there someone that struggled with something? That's the type of charity you should get behind because you have an actual passion behind it. And again, the money part is only one thing. It's really about your energy, support, social media awareness, etc. that you can help these charities. Okay. Outside of the charity part, we talk about is how to make money, how to invest money. So let's go through some things about how to make money. What's interesting for 2024 is it's an election year. The stock market actually went wild this year and not enough people are talking about it. There are some really high performance stocks like Tesla, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, etc., that are not getting enough credit. These are big, 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 big gains, not 10, 20, 30%, which would be awesome. I'm talking about 130%, 220%, 84%, 47%, 115%. Like, there's some staggering, staggering numbers that have happened in 2023. And in 2024, typically in an election year, there's chaos in the stock market. However, because of the performance of these companies and the merit that they got the stock gains is from their financials and their sales and their performance, I see another really interesting year in 2024 to really look at the stock market. Now, how do you look at the stock market? How do you make decisions? The way I look at the stock market is I invest into things that I am a buyer of, or I know that the masses are a buyer of. I don't look at niche things, niche companies, niche products, small companies that you're hoping to have a big success. That's more like gambling, right? If you're buying penny stocks or you're betting on the next stock or the next company just IPO'd, sometimes you can consider that similar to gambling because those don't have the same fundamentals as Walmart, Google, Netflix, Facebook, Tesla, Amazon, etc. Now, when you make decisions, like what I do is if I'm a buyer on Amazon often and I know my friends, family, my mom, friend, that like people use Amazon all the time and it's very convenient and it's getting better and better and better. I want to own some Amazon stock. I'm not a rocket scientist, but Amazon is one of the best performing stocks in the history of the world. The company keeps getting bigger, 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 more efficient, more efficient, more efficient. As an investor, I like it. Do you think, you know, ask yourself this question, do you think Amazon will be here in five years? If the answer is yes, maybe you should invest in Amazon. Could the stock go down a bunch this month and next month and six months from now? Of course it could. Amazon can have fluctuations. Their stock could go down. It can go up. It can go back down. But over the course of time, in three years, four years, five years, 10 years, et cetera, I'm going to bet a lot of money that it's going to go up, even if it has roller coasters along the way. Why? Every year over the last couple of decades, the financials have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The company just keeps getting bigger and more efficient. I want to bet on that company. Raise your hand if you think that Apple will be here in five years. I do. Trevor does. Why? Because for the last, <laughs> every time we buy an iPhone and the iPhone 2, 3, 4, 5, now number 15, and people run in lines and they completely sell out of this $1,500 phone, $1,200 phone, etc. I'm an investor in that. You have to ask yourself this question. If you were to have bought an iPhone's worth of stock every time you bought an iPhone, how much would that be worth right now? Meaning, if you just bought the iPhone 1 and it was like 700 bucks and you put in $700 in the, the Apple stock at the time and then the iPhone 2 and then the 3 and then the 4, etc. If you would have put in the same amount, 700 bucks, 1000 bucks, 1200 bucks, 800 bucks, whatever the price of the phone was, into the Apple stock at the exact same day while you bought the phone, you obviously could afford the phone. You could probably afford the stock at the same day, right? If you would have done that each time over the last 15 iPhones, how much would you have? It's only 15 times, let's call it 1,000, 1,200 bucks each. That's really only like 15 to 20 grand worth of phones, right? Yeah, it would be worth over a million dollars. 
let that let that sink in for a second if you're listening or you're on youtube or wherever you are in the world just let it sink in for a second if you just timed it the day the iphone came out you just spent the exact same money to buy the stock the sheer math of that is insane you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars of return and if you actually just left it in and compounded it it's over a million dollars do you know how many times the, the apple stock has split since the apple iphone came out a bunch of times and so i say that not to be like oh you missed out there's an iphone 16 coming a 17 an 18 a 19 a 20 21 remember i asked you to raise your hand you think they're gonna be here in five years well that means there's an iphone 20 coming in five years right you can still invest into Apple and over the course of time, it's probably going to do really, really well. Now, again, the Apple stock could go down tonight and tomorrow and three months from now and nine months from now. But over the course of time, Apple will continue to rise. They will continue to have more and more and more sales. They will make more and more new efficiencies of their phone. They will make billions and billions and billions and tens of billions of dollars per launch. I'm an investor in something like that. There's no rocket science behind my investment decisions. Do you see where I'm going? Who here thinks that Tesla will be here in five years? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, if you see Tesla's on the road all the time and every single quarter, Elon Musk breaks another record of sales for Tesla, that sounds like an interesting investment. If the first person in human history to be, have four different multi-billion dollar companies has a publicly traded company like Tesla, I want to invest into it. Again, there's no rocket science behind it, even though he's basically a rocket scientist. I want to invest in Tesla because I want to bet on one of the most interesting characters in human history to figure it out. He's going to figure out how to make Tesla bigger and bigger and better and better. And no matter what happens to him in the media, year after year, they break records in selling Teslas. That's not a rocket science tip. It's, hey, <laughs> they sell a lot of freaking Teslas over and over and over. Teslas are not cheap. I want to invest in the stock. It's done really well year after year. And could it go down next month? Could it go down in six months? Absolutely. Of course it can. But over the course of time, if you just look at the history of Tesla stock, it's done amazing. And so you kind of feel my point when it comes to Tesla, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, Walmart, Google, etc. These are household name companies that if you look at their history over the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they've done consistently well. And most likely, they're going to keep doing that over the long course of time, even if there's hiccups along the way. So as you're thinking for yourself about investing in the stock market, put in small amounts of money. Put in 50 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 5 grand, 1,200 bucks, whatever it is that you can afford. And just keep adding to that over the course of time. And you will build up a stock portfolio of companies that you like, companies that you believe in, and companies that you research. Okay. <clears throat> That's an investing thing to be considering because, again, in election year, things get crazy. The media goes crazy. During that time, it's also a good time for you to make money. When there's chaos, there's opportunity. And so as things happen in our world, you're going to see a lot of situations arise. People are going to get nervous. People are going to back out of their businesses. People are going to sell their real estate cheaper, their cars cheaper, their watches cheaper. People are going to lose their businesses, which is a sad thing. But during all the chaos, there's opportunity. So during these times, you should be watching out for special deals. You might see someone willing to hand away their company or hand away their business or have someone trade them for equity or have someone looking for an advisor and a consultant, that which might be you, or be looking to hire new people. There's a lot of new hiring happening in 2024. There is a lot of opportunity during the chaos if you can stay calm and focused. And so I'm actively looking for deal flow throughout 2024 because during chaos is when interesting things arise. I'll give you a quick example. During the shutdown a couple years ago with Everbull, our acai bowl chain, at the time when March 2020 happened, everybody was freaking out like, oh my gosh, no one's signing leases on restaurants. Aha. Jeff Fenster, the owner of Everbull, went very, very proactive in signing leases. Me and my friends, we helped raise $5 million for the company to get its war chest ready to go sign a bunch of leases and expand a bunch of the locations because while everyone else is backing out of their leases for restaurants and a lot of gyms and a lot of other things because they're nervous about the country shutting down, during that time, during that year, Jeff Fenster from Everbowl went very proactive and signed over 200, I think almost 300 leases. 
and a bunch of new franchisees because he was getting sweet deals. What do I mean by that? Well, if no one else wants to get a restaurant lease right now, if other people are nervous about signing leases for their gyms, their law offices, accounting offices, subway sandwiches, mailboxes, etc., dry cleaning, whatever, well, the landlords, the people that own the buildings are not in a negotiation position. Everbowl is. Jeff Fenster is. He's the one that can go out there and negotiate leases and get six months free rent, 12 months free rent, 50,000 in TI, which is tenant improvements. Like he's out there negotiating hundreds of leases and really good deals with his franchisees because no one else is going to go proactively want to sign leases during this time during the chaos. 2024 will be filled with chaos. And I'm not saying to scare you. I'm saying it's a reality. Whenever there's an election year, there's a lot of craziness that happens in the media and people get nervous. Things change. People have emotional shifts. And during those times, you might see interesting businesses, situations, products for sale, businesses for sale, things that used to be very expensive or hard to get, now all of a sudden available. A lot of chaos happens in people's minds. And during that time, if you can stay calm and focused, there might be some really interesting opportunities for their business to come to you or their sales come to you or you eat their lunch because they stop doing whatever they're doing or you go join a brand, jo join a business, partner with someone that's getting nervous or scared or excited. like there's a lot of interesting things that happen during the chaos. Also during that time, you're going to see a lot of change. Things are going to change, especially depends on you know who gets elected at the end of the year. And so during that time, you staying calm you being consistent with what you're doing can also make you stand out leaps and bounds. While other people get nervous or maybe they're posting less on social media or your competitors aren't showing up as much or they're falling off, etc. You staying consistent, you staying smart, you working on your skills, you studying, you getting good at whatever it is that you do. Let's call it sales in this example or real estate, whatever. You getting better and better and more proficient at what you do will make you stand out leaps and bounds amongst other people in your industry. Staying calm in the chaos is what I mean by all this. Okay. So we talked a little bit about the investing side. We talked a little about the money making side, just for something for you to think about. Now, as the year goes on, today's the first day. Today is, if you're listening on actual Money Monday on January 1st, 2024, you have some decisions to make. The other way to make money is to actually save money. But not like Dave Ramsey. I'm not going to go tell you, oh, don't buy Starbucks or say anything crazy like that. What I want to talk to you about is on the saving money side, how to get your financial house in order. You need to have a very, very, very serious, honest discussion with yourself and your significant other or whoever's another parent or someone else running your household. So if you have a husband or wife or if you have someone, significant other or a roommate that you're sharing finances, like if you're sharing finances with someone, you need to be able to have a very blunt, serious discussion. If you're not and you are either single or you are in a relationship but you handle the finances, this is a very important talk. Okay. Here's what you have to do for 2024. And you should do this for the rest of your lives every single year. Be blunt with yourself and be very serious and be very focused. Ready for this? Okay. Go to your bank account and literally print out the last 30 days. Go to your credit card statement and print out the last 30 days. Again, you could do this virtually, but having it physically in front of you will change things for you. Bank account, 30 days. Credit card, 30 days. If you want extra credit, do it for 60 days because sometimes not everything is in that 30-day window. But let's just call it 30 days. So you print out the 30 days of your bank account. You print out the 30 days of your credit cards. All of them, whether they're small, medium, or large, all of them. And how much do you really make in your business profession, investments, career, whatever? You lay this out on the table or you put it onto a whiteboard and you have a very realistic discussion with yourself. How much did you spend in the last 30 days in your bank account? You can see it. And don't be like, oh yes, I don't always buy those clothes or I don't always go to that event or I don't always go to that birthday party. Be realistic about how much you spend during that time. On your credit card, same thing. If you notice that you went shopping a bunch of times and you're like, oh, I don't normally go shopping that many times. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you should go back and look two months, three months, four months and see if there's a pattern. If there's not, and it's a one-off. You don't have to count it, but you should still consider it as part of your monthly overhead. You have to figure out 
what is my actual monthly overhead? And if you have a significant other, I will bet you they think the number is different than what you think it is. You might think your overhead's three grand a month. They might think it's four grand a month or five grand a month. That doesn't sound like a big difference. It's actually 30 to 40, 30 to 50% difference, like a lot, 30 to 60% difference. So you can be way off by something as simple as that, simply because your significant other might have different needs. They might have different things that they spend money on, makeup, hair, food. You might buy gym equipment, supplies, training things, membership fees. You might go shooting guns. You might, this person might go do this X, Y, Z. This might, they might go love cars, whatever. You might have a lot of different expenses that you don't realize the other person doesn't have or does have. So looking at your bank statement, looking at your credit card and having a very serious, real discussion of how much is my monthly overhead? How much do I spend on rent? How much do I spend on my car? How much do I spend on insurance? How much do I spend on gas? How much do I spend on makeup, hair, accessories, food, supplies, Uber deliveries, Postmates deliveries, DoorDash, whatever services you use, how much you spend on Amazon, and look at the actual physical number at scale. What did you really spend during 30 days or up to 60 days and really figure out what that number is? What did you really spend? That number, you now have to compare to your actual income. Here's why I say actual income. Some people think, well, well, I make 60 grand a year. That may be true that you might make five grand a month gross, but you don't think about how much come out in taxes, how much come out for insurance, how much comes out for Medicare or 401ks, et cetera. You have to look at that five grand a month that you're making. I'm just using an example number. That five grand a month that you're making, how much do you really net take home into your piggy bank, into that bank account? Remember, we were just looking at our bank account and what you spent. How much do you actually earn into your bank account after all the fees, insurance, medical things like that, 401ks, whatever the other things that are coming out of your five grand a month gross, how much is really ending up in your piggy bank, in your bank account? Are there any other pieces of income, right? Do you have real estate investments? Do you have side hustle money? Are you a barber on the side or a makeup artist on the side? Or do you do massage therapy or personal training? Like, are there other revenue streams that you have? Add all those things up. And then at the end of the day, when you think, look at how much you spent from your bank account, your credit cards, your overhead, et cetera, your rent, everything all inclusive and how much your income was and your side hustle money was, you can now have an honest, blunt discussion of how much do you actually net at the end of the 30 days. If all this money comes in, let's call it five grand a month plus all your side hustle money from being a massage therapist or personal trainer, real estate agent, makeup artist, hairstylist, whatever, and you spent X amount, three grand a month, et cetera, what is the net? What is the arbitrage? What is the, how much is left over after you really look at how much you brought in versus how much you spent? This is sounds like a very basic thing. Nobody does it. It's so rare. I bring this up all the time and I wish people would do it because it will change your actual life. It will change the way you look at things. Again, this is not for you to go cut out your Starbucks coffee. The concept is just to see how much do you really spend of your natural habitat, your natural life of you naturally going to spend this money on your memberships and fees and dues, ex travel, et cetera, gas, like the things that you spend in your normal life and how much do you actually bring home from your gross income plus any side hustle money or any side investments. Once you know that net number, right? The difference, what's called the delta. What is the delta of five grand gross plus let's call another thousand bucks in side money. So 6,000 gross. Let's say you net 4,400 out of that and you spent 3,200. That means you have a $1,200 delta. $4,400 net, $3,200 that you spend, the 1,200 between there is the delta. That's how much your actual net take home is after everything. Then you can take that 1200 bucks a month and extrapolate it by 12. That means $14,400 theoretically is your net, net, net take home at the end of the year from your overhead versus your income. Why is it so important? You might need to make some changes. You might realize like, well, I live in a four bedroom apartment and there's just two of us. That's interesting. Oh, we spend $80 a day in food from all of our food deliveries. $80 a day. Wait a minute. That's $2,400 a month. How do you spend $2,400 a month when you're bringing in $6,000 a month in gross? That's insane. You start to see it and you're like, wow, 
this is actually crazy. I'm spending a ton here or I'm making more than I thought here. I could, I can change you. You cannot change things if you don't see it. If you don't actually sit down and look at it, I know this sounds like I'm yelling at you, but I am. It'll change your life. It'll sincerely change your life and it'll change the way you look at money, income, etc. The goal is, well, if you can't cut any of these things out, maybe you can cut some things out from your spending habits. How do I make more money? How do I make more? I've got the five grand a month job, so that's good. I got the thousand dollars in side money, but I could make more. Why should I make more? Well, I just realized that I actually spend this, this, and this, and this. I want to save up for a big trip or a vacation, or I want to buy a snowboard, or I want to buy a, whatever. <clears throat> you need to make more money. And now you can look at it of why you need to make more. How much do you really need to make in order to hit those goals? And maybe you want to buy a new car, that new snowboard, that take that trip, whatever. You now can make clear goals by understanding the math, understanding the money. The whole concept of the money Mondays is, is to have a blunt discussion about money. So if you look at how much you spend, look at how much you make, it can actually change your life. Even though it sounds so basic, it's something that's so important. Okay. So we talked a bit about investing. We talked a bit about me yelling at you about why you should look at your finances, you and your significant other. How do I make more money? Well, we are in a very fascinating time in society. Your cell phone and social media and mobile apps allow you to make money from any skill you have and skills that aren't really a skill, meaning walking dogs, <laughs> um, maybe, it's, maybe dog walking is a skill, but walking dogs, uh, <clears throat> taking over people's houses and like house sitting. Not really a skill. Maybe there's some skill to it. Babysitting, not really a skill, but kind of a skill. Just sitting around someone's house and watching out for their kids. But things that you can actually have talent behind, guitar lessons, piano lessons, chess lessons, things that you enjoy, you can now monetize on the side. And you might think to yourself, how am I going to monetize chess lessons or Spanish lessons or teach people Japanese or guitar or how to edit videos? When you're charging 25 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, 75 bucks an hour, <laughs> you can make more than most traditional jobs. It's not like you're making that, you're not making 40 bucks an hour at a traditional job for the most part. You could do that being a Spanish tutor. You could do that being someone that teaches how people like how to meal prep. You could do that teaching someone how to speak Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Mandarin, f French, whatever. Like you could be teaching kids or adults these type of languages or teach them how to play guitar or piano or whatever. Like, these are 25 bucks an hour, 40 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, and sometimes higher type tutoring positions that you can do from your cell phone. You can do from a laptop. You can do it in person as well, but you could probably do both. You could do some hybrid, some, some via cell phone, via FaceTime, via Zoom, some in person. But if you are good at something, like a language, like a musical instrument, like a sport, etc., you can monetize it. And I don't think people do it enough. I think you love playing chess or you love playing pickleball or you love makeup and hair. Why aren't you doing makeup and hair on the side? You charge a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, $200 for makeup and hair. That's really good money. What if you did one makeup and hair gig per day and it was 150 bucks? That's $4,500 a month. I don't know if you remember earlier about the, you know, making 50, 60 grand a year. You could make that by doing one makeup and hair gig a day. One. What if you did two? What if you did three? What if you did one, two, or three makeup gigs a day or hair gigs a day and you were doing some weddings on the weekends because the weddings, <clears throat> they're paying you 300 bucks, 400 bucks, 500 bucks to do their makeup and hair, sometimes more. That's just a side hustle skill. You might be a real estate agent or a notary or might work at a restaurant, etc. but your side hustle skill of doing makeup or hair or nails or fashion design or guitar lessons or piano lessons or Spanish, whatever, teaching people how to play these games or skills. These are things you can make 25 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour on the side. That's real money monetizing your skill, something that you could even learn how to do online. You can go hire a tutor to learn something and then go be a teacher to other people of that skill or of that thing in your mind. These are things that you could do from your cell phone today and you could have it in your Rolodex and you could have it in your in your repertoire forever simply by learning a skill or doing something that you enjoy and doing it on the side. Oftentimes, you can do things like this and it becomes bigger than your main job. 
like I just said, with makeup and hair, if you're charging 150 bucks for a session, whoa. If you all of a sudden you're like, hey, you know what? I want to become a masseuse or I want to become a personal trainer. If you're charging 60 bucks, 80 bucks, 100 bucks for a personal training session and you get a couple clients a day, bada bing, bada boom, you're making five grand, seven grand, 10 grand a month doing personal training sessions. You might just be really good at basketball. Like that kid I talked about before dribbled too much. He's charging for basketball sessions and now he's training Drake and 2 Chains and NBA players and Steph Curry. He was growing up in my house making social media content, literally just dribbling a basketball. You can look him up on Instagram. It's dribbled too much with the number two. And now he's literally training household name NBA players and celebrities. His only skill set is dribbling a basketball. I love him, but that's what he's been doing ever since I've known him for over a decade is training people how to dribble a basketball. What is your basketball skill? What are you good at? Are you good at soccer? Are you good at pickleball? Are you good at chess? Are you good at poker? You could teach people how to play poker and they will pay you 25 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, whatever the rate is. And this is something you can do on the side or as your main gig from your cell phone. You have no excuses. I still feel like I'm yelling at you do because I watched 15 year old kids making so much money doing side hustle gigs, <coughs> organizing closets, cleaning shoes, cleaning, cleaning, what's it called? The pavement, like the driveways of their neighbors. And they're charging a hundred bucks, 200 bucks for these type of things. They're 15. They're 16 years old. What's your excuse? Like I, I've watched it happen so often. And I just remember how I grew up working three jobs at the same time. I was here in San Diego working at the Qualcomm Stadium, Stadium selling peanuts and Cracker Jacks, working at Ruby's Diner in the evening times with a freaking sailor cap on, working for a stockbroker at Oldie Discount Stockbrokers. I was working for them. 20 bucks an hour, I was getting paid for them under the table. Like I was working three separate jobs at the same time to save up money. And so when I talk about this with frustration, it's because we're going to a time in our society where you can make money on the side. Now, you might be listening to this like, Dan, I make 100 grand a year. I make 50 grand a year or 200 grand or I'm rich fantastic. I'm not necessarily yelling at you. I'm not yelling with you because you've got kids, friends, freeloaders, and other people around you that could be making side money and they're not because they're just not thinking about what they have on this cell phone ready to go right this second that they could be doing to make money on the side. Using their brain, using their hands, using their skills at their disposal right this second. There's so many apps. There's so many ways to do it. You do not need to be famous. You don't need a big social media following. You literally just can get registered on these apps and all of a sudden, boom, you're now an Uber driver or you're a Postmates driver or you're a massage therapist or you're a personal trainer or you're a pick pickleball instructor or a basketball instructor. The examples go on for forever, thousands and thousands of examples of what you could be doing to make extra side money. Okay, so I did a bit of yelling, did a ye little bit of ranting, a little bit of passion about my charities, etc. I want to wrap it up with this. 2024 is going to make a lot of people stand out. You're going to see the people that sadly um, didn't prepare for this moment. They didn't prepare their overhead. They didn't prepare their accounting. They didn't prepare their business structure. They didn't prepare their staff for this chaotic year that's ahead. So during these times is when you need to get your skills up, make sure you're focused on your business, Look at the, the realities of things about your accounting, your finances, your overhead, whether you're the entrepreneur or you work for a company. Have these real blunt discussions about your business. Have these real discussions about yourself, your skills, your talent. What are you able to provide? The better you become, the sharper your iron gets, if you will. The smarter you get, the more access you get to network skills, information the more useful and more powerful you are for society and the more useful and powerful you are for your business that you're working on. Whether you own the business or you work in the business, the smarter you get, the more skills you get, the better you get, the more important you are to these companies, whether you own it or you're working for one. And that makes you invaluable. And the last thing I'll say is we also need peace in our society and we need to come together. And while everyone's going to try to tear us apart um, Democratic and Republican, independent, red hair, purple hair, blue, green, alien, and everything between this year. We have to stick together throughout this. They're going to try to pull us apart. When I say they, I'm talking about the media. Um, and we can't let it happen. We've watched it happen too many times. We've watched ourselves get divided so much at the last election. And I would hate to see that happen again, especially when we've been through it before. 
and we're aware of what's going to happen. Um, we're aware of the chaos that's coming. We're aware of the drama and the nut, you know, the nuts, craziness, whatever the word I was trying to figure out of like what's about to unfold this year. And I just can, would ask that we give grace to each other. Um, we don't sit and fight and bicker and go at, go to war with each other on social media or at dinners or lose relationships over politics this year. Um, this is a very important year for our society. It's a very important year for our finances, a very important year for our mental health and some of the other countries and what the wars they're going through. Like this is a very important year for our whole world and for our future. And so I, I implore you and I ask you to be the one that's stay strong, uh, isn't out there fighting, isn't out there causing more chaos. Try to try to stay calm in your world. Try to talk to people about the money, their finances, their investments, the charity and things in their society, in their circles and in your world so that we can make this world a better place. And I think at the end of the day, um, the better you become, the smarter you become, and the more people you can bring up with you so that they can become smarter, they have more information, they start to be a better person, the better it is for your entire community and everyone around you. So with that, I will ask you guys, um, make sure to visit themoneymondays.com. We do a weekly Zoom call every Monday at 4 p.m. PST. During those Zoom calls, um, I'm teaching there or I bring on other executives or business people, sometimes some surprises, you know, athletes or celebrities that will pop in. And during the themoneymondays.com is where we have these really blunt discussions via Zoom and I'm answering live questions and I'm giving in-depth speeches. And so again, for you, your family, your friends, uh, people, your coworkers, et cetera, the moneymondays.com is a powerful way for you guys to dive in with our community and really listen to these Zoom calls and interact, ask questions from me and some of my circle, my friends. And as you're listening to this podcast and you're listening to our future podcast, share it with your friends. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It does help a lot. We want to keep high up on the rankings because this is how we have the discussions happen about money. Far beyond me, it's just people are searching and seeing at the top of the ranks and top of the charts. And that helps a lot, obviously, for people that want to listen to it, want to share it, want to learn about it. And it all stems from you guys, especially the ones that have been with me since the beginning from last year. So with that, Happy New Year's. Thank you for listening. And I will see you guys next Monday.